Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiterter. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. It's an interesting case of a patient who attended with an oral polyp in the left ear. And you'll see in a moment, um, you can see the polyp just there to the right of screen. And I'm just hovering over it with the zonal suction probe. I'm just suctioning some discharge that was coating this. And you can see once I've removed some of the discharge, it's revealed itself. Uh, in its full glory. So an oral polyp, um, rarely, uh, typically it's full of uh, pus or uh, it can also sometimes be full of granulation tissue, so connective tissue. Uh, oral polyps can have their own blood vessels that develop and uh, surround the surface as you can see here and they can excrete uh, some discharge, some weeping which gives up a foul odour. Um, causes of Oral polyps can vary. Typically, it's due to trauma to the epithelial layer of skin, so the outermost layer of skin, so that it's otitis externa, infection, or sometimes in this particular case, the patient did admit to scratching their ear, which is probably the, the cause of the formation of the oral polyp. Um, very rarely, they can be cancerous um, and they can be quite dangerous. It could be necrotizing otitis externa, um, necrotizing. Otitis externa is when you have an ear infection, but you can start chewing and eating up the temporal bone, so the bone that surrounds the, the ear canal itself, and it can spread upwards towards the brain, to, and it can cause meningitis, possibly a brain abscess. So that's a very, very um, worst case scenarios. So with this polyp at this stage, the patient, uh, I've written to the patient's GP, they're going to prescribe some medication and hopefully that will, uh, that will be the, the end of it. If not, the patient will need to be referred onwards to an ENT surgeon who can probably take some CT scans and have a further look at the polyp and to see whether it needs to be surgically removed. Uh, so we removed a big plug of wax that was occluding the ear canal. There's some residual wet wax, dead skin, um, bit of matted hair directly on the eardrum. So the patient had also been getting water in the ear, they've been poking in the ear of the cotton bud. Just makes it a bit more tricky because of the polyp. I have to be careful that the endoscope doesn't poke and prod directly into the polyp because that can be a bit uncomfortable for the patient. This is where I feel again, an endoscope comes into its own. If I was using a head loops or a microscope and I had to put a speculum in the ear, it can be a bit more tricky because the speculum would have more likely than not make contact with this polyp and be uncomfortable for the patient. With an endoscope I'm able to position the endoscope just out of the way of the polyp either to the left or right or over the top like I'm doing now. You can see the posterior half of the eardrum to the back part of the eardrum you can see the blue tinge but still a lot of debris here and this is stuck it's impacted. It's not always easy to vacuum debris and wax and dead keratin out of the ear. Uh, even with a very powerful suction machine, it's just the consistency of um, any debris or wax. Uh, it can be quite mushy at times and it can be adhered to the ear canal wall or it can be adhered to the eardrum and it can actually clog up the suction tube. So as you're vacuuming, it clogs it up. So it can be quite tricky. I'm just using a fine end gauge here. I'm just trying to suction this wax out of the inferior recesses to the bottom of the eardrum there is a trench in most people's ears and quite often water can get trapped in there if you've been if you follow me on facebook and instagram i more or less on a daily basis also upload some very short videos uh, that last no more than a couple of minutes i don't put them on youtube so i don't think um, I think some people uh, it won't go down too well I don't think on YouTube when I do some short videos so um, I, I tend to put them on Instagram and Facebook and I had a, a video of a procedure where someone had some water trapped deep in their ear um, it lodged after showering and I, I had to suction it out so just be a bit careful guys I, if you've been watching my videos and following my channel you know that um, I'm strongly against the use of uh, allowing water to enter the ear so again, I'm just entering the ear again with the fine end gauge. I'm on the posterior part of the eardrum now. It's quite slimy, this residual wax. Um, the patient, as I said, has been getting a lot of water in there and using drops, so it's quite tricky to remove all of it. Um, so the majority of the eardrum is now visible. It's just the anterior part, I believe. So uh, 
to the left, and I'll be going across to the left in a moment. And when you've got Debbie that's matted with hair, it's, it's, it's even more difficult to suction. Uh, matted wax, I find, reduces the suction power, the suction grip. So we're just on the mid aspect of the ear canal, on the anterior canal wall. So the anterior means the front part. In the case of the left ear, the front part of the ear canal is to the left. Um, if it was the right ear, the anterior canal wall of the right ear is to the right hand side. So towards the midline, towards the nose. So just trying to remove some of this discharge of the eardrum now. It's becoming more and more apparent and visible. In terms of the patient's symptoms, they are actually alleviated at this stage because the ear is slightly infected. I just want to get as much debris out of the ear canal as possible. It's not possible to remove every little last uh, speck of wax or debris will be here all day. And actually, it'd be uncomfortable for the patient. Uh, we run the risk of causing trauma to the ear canal, which can then cause another infection. So. Again, if you've been watching my videos and channel, I've got this saying, uh, sometimes less is more. Something that I learned myself through uh, an ENT surgeon, colleague, friend, I've, we've got very close friends, we've also worked together for a number of years, Mr. Stephen Darius Rajali, who is one of the original co-founders of Clearwax with myself. And I think when I first started here, I well, probably, um, yeah, I like to remove as much as I can. Um, but as you get more experienced, you, you realise actually you, you can cause more trauma. It's not always necessary. And I learned that from Mr. Rajali as a surgeon. He's, he's very uh, keen to always stress that to, to his registrars and um, to some of our clear wax delegates. You can cause more by trying to mop up every little speck of wax. You can actually cause more injury and trauma, which we don't want. So there's the polyp again. You can see it's got some blood vessels just around the surface and it's got some granulation tissue so granulation tissue is uh, connective tissue which forms and it's at the base of the ear canal so we call that it's protruding outwards from the inferior part of the ear canal it's probably mid canal it's not right near the entrance but it's not medial either and there's a good close-up of it tympanic membrane is fully visible all that will dry up now and obviously the patient needs to get some drops and this is just the video of the patient's right ear. So you can see the ear canal is clear, the tympanic membrane is intact but it's dull, there's no right reflex and the short process of the hammer, uh, hammer bone is protruding outwards which uh, suggests the patient's got a retraction of the eardrum which I confirm by performing tympanometry which is a pressure test to see how well the eardrum vibrates and at what uh, different air pressures.